So for all those who want to hear, I'm going to do something right out of the bat, which is my top 10 predictions of 2024. So let's go. First thing that I want to talk about is quantum computing. Everybody believe that's something that's happening? The question becomes, how can it be so impactful in places like Harlem or any other community? The number one thing that happens with quantum computing is accelerating everything faster, better, quicker. And that's what small businesses need more than anything. You know, there's too many of us losing because the big guys get this quantum stuff already happening. We need to do this now into the communities that we are supporting across this nation. So quantum computing is a real thing. Let's go to the next thing. Who knows what volumetric technology is? Raise your hand if you know volumetric. We got one, two, maybe three people in this whole place knows what, vo or some people just too tired, can't raise their hand. But volumetric technology, and by the way, if all goes correctly, we're going to actually have a volumetric studio right in this location. What that allows you to do is to, you're, you're creating using volumetric technology from a 3D um, version. So most things, we got people here that do films and all that kind of stuff, and you know that primarily it's just one way. With volumetric, you can literally make it in 3D. It's a new thing. It's the VR, it's the AR, and all that kind of good stuff. So I want you to remember this, volumetric technology. Clayton Banks talked about it. I'm going to be talking about it the rest of the year. I'm going to build this out in our space so that we can actually teach people about it, learn people about it, because it is a real thing. It includes XR, AR, and all those things, right? Met metaverse, all those things you've been hearing about. When you look at the creative part of it, it's the volumetric studio that we'll be building out. Very excited about it. And the state, right? The state, we got Curtis Archer here. State is even looking at these type of things, what they're going to do with filming and all that stuff moving forward. So we're very excited about it. Let's go to the next one. Ready? Yes. Oh, Inspo. You saw that on the, uh, you saw that on the invite, I think, right? Hopefully everybody saw it. Did, some of you might have said, what is Inspo? Everybody know what I meant by Inspo? Good. I hope nobody knew. But if you do, for me, it's about imagination, right? That's the real create opportunity that we're trying to create here is. It could be that, exactly. You could actually add that to it. The imagination, which because what's happening, and a lot of us are being sort of like, uh, I don't know, pushed away through AI. We start to lose our imagination a little bit because we need that support from AI. I get it. I'm sorry. You want to stay in front of the I know. Okay. All right. So the, uh, but I do think that for us to really look at our future to be even better than what we can think, is using our imagination. So I wanted that sort of word. It also comes with the word of impact and all those kind of things are all about inspo built into that. And I hope we'll use that term quite a bit throughout the year because I do believe that we have an opportunity that maybe once in a lifetime, if you look at the trillion dollar infrastructure bill, when you look at all these things that are happening with the state and the city, this is an opportunity for us to uh, map our future our way not from someone else. All right, so let's go to the next one, Yuri. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, tech-enabled communities. That is, a, a, that is actually, a, I believe I created that word, tech-enabled communities, because what, it, what you hear in the world is smart cities. I don't like the term smart cities, right? There's, what does that make you guys dumb? <laughs> it's like, nobody's dumb. So we don't say smart cities. It, it, I get it's easy to say. But what the reality of Internet of Things and smart stuff, the whole key to it is how do you make your community more efficient? That's all it is. Make it more efficient, right? A good example is the Bronx, Upper Manhattan, uh, upper Manhattan and Harlem. Largest, or I guess the greatest number of people that have asthma. Why? Well, we don't know all the whys. There's certainly a lot of it coming from a history. But boy, we're not even like doing enough to uh, measure the, 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 I don't know, what are the particulates in those areas. 
we can do that now with all of these new technologies. So this is about a tech enablement, and I think 24 will be accelerated on that. And the key to it to be very good is to add your voice to it. Here's our problem. See, too many of our people who are putting out these smart cities, they don't care what the people want. So they put up all this stuff, including, and I hate to say it, I hope nobody here is from Google. Well, Google did it. Where is anybody from Google here? OK, good, because I might need their money. So <laughs> they tried to build a whole city that would be a smart city in Canada and uh, failed. And they asked, what happened? You know, because they got more money than God. And they were like, oh, we didn't talk to the people. <laughs> so we put all this stuff out, and everybody's like, no, that's not the problem we're having here. And if you look at Harlem, Harlem, I don't care. I've been to a couple of um, mayor things where they come to Harlem and talk to everybody. And I remember one, Curtis, about 15 years ago, and, and, the, and the mayor was talking about, I opened it up to the community and said, what do you guys care about? And they said, well, uh, we need better housing for affordable housing. Well, we're very concerned about the sanitation in our streets. And of course, as a result, we have um, rodents and this kind of stuff, right? What happened when I got to another one 15 years later? Same thing. <laughs> Something's wrong with us, right? So not with us, but with everybody. And we now have this opportunity to really go after these issues. Let's keep going. Ah, neuroscience advancement. Anybody down with that? Hell no. But that's all right. <laughs> Neuroscience is a real thing, it's a key thing. It's, it really impacts even like workers and employers, people who are having mental issues and all that kind of stuff. So neuroscience is, is a great way for us to start to help people all over the world, certainly here in New York where a lot of stress is happening and all that kind of stuff. And this is now um, actually working. We're seeing it already. So we don't wanna be the ones last to this type of information and this type of stuff. We wanna be a part of it. Let's keep going. Ah, decentralized technology. Now, normally you probably heard that through blockchain and all that kind of stuff. But it's happening across all of our different types of businesses. Uh, so decentralizing it allows us to deal with primarily, in my opinion, is cybersecurity. If you've ever been hacked, if you've ever had uh, an issue uh, or some sort of you know, cybersecurity hit you, um, it's a pain. It's a real pain. And I've had to help a lot of people with that. But now, with decentralizing it, it's a lot more difficult for the hackers to get to you. So there's a lot going on here. Let's keep going. Ah, reshape leadership. I believe that the leaders of our big companies and even some of our middle um, companies and all that kind of stuff, we got to get new type of thinking around our leadership. It's not the 60s and 70s and 80s anymore. This is a whole new way to think about working with people, all COVID, with the virtual, all the stuff that's going on, there's going to be a reshaping of leadership. You ought to be one of them. Keep going. Ah, look at that, commercial space. <laughs> I like that one. It's really not tech-driven necessarily, but we do know that space is important. Isn't it nice to be in our little space here? I mean, it's not that big, but it's still, it's a... When we have kids here, we have, uh, I think this past summer we had, like, I don't know, something about like 24, 20, 30 kids um, every day. And boy, it was just a space that they had never been in before and see the kind of things they were able to see. PS5 in the back and, you know, all these different technologies we have in this place. And we know how important space is. So we would need to, that's why I could talk about the volumetric studio and all that kind of stuff. But also, there's gonna, we're going to constantly make sure that my two words I use a lot, which is access and exposure. If we can continue to do that, it will be great in this particular city. And then I want to mention 6G. Everybody's been hearing so much about 5G. Let's sweep that up down. 5G was cool for a minute. It never really hit you, and never did anything for you. But 6G is a real thing. I've been doing a lot of work on it for some time now, and I believe it's going to make a big difference in a lot of different ways, speed-wise, all kind of different ways. So 6G is a, is a real thing. And so uh, a lot, follow that if you can't. At least talk to me about it. I'll be talking to you about it all the time. Oh, then there's advanced infrastructure. That's what a lot of our people here are today, right? Advanced infrastructure. We're now looking at all of the ways we can attach things, how we can use infrastructure to make life better. All that kind of stuff is important. So if you have any you know, 
if you care about our community, we got to deal with the infrastructure. Too many things rocking out. Too many things are, are basically falling apart. We've got a good ways to use it, but that infrastructure can also address some of the issues that are happening in our community if you build out the right infrastructure at the right time. And wow, thank you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I do have, okay, click one more. Let's see what else. Oh, oh yeah, one more. Ethical AI. That's right. How could I have a top 10 without talking about AI? So as good as AI has been to a lot of us in a lot of ways, especially this past year where, uh, you know, I had a couple of people that, you know, weren't really that literate in some ways, you know, they have telling me that. Um, but when I turned them on to ChatGBT, it's like, boom, I can write a book. And it, we all have different ways that we learn and all this kind of stuff. But one of the things we got to be very clear about that there is ethics to this. And there, yeah, I, I was at a particular event. I don't know who was there. Oh, was that our, our conference? And they were talking about AI, and there was, was a whole presentation about AI. And one of the things they talked about was called boxed, what do they call that? Box, um, what is that? What they call in your braids? Box braids, is that what it's called? If you, if you put it in chat BT at the time, they were like, what is that? <laughs> a box and a braid, what is that, right? So, so AI has a lot to go to get even better. Um, it now knows how to say it, for example. But I do know that the ethics of it cannot be prejudice, right? We have to be careful with that. Remember, AI is very much about the past, not so much about the future. So they're looking at things that were really terrible back in the day. So we want to make sure that we are holding the people's feet to the fire when it comes to AI. Thank you very much. I'm Clayton Banks. We're going to get moving on some other stuff. Thank you very much. That's my top ten. I can't believe I get to talk to Joshua Bright War uh, Bart. Well, by Clay the way, Clayton, you always invite me to these things because you know all I want to talk about is how great you are and how great Silicon Harlem is. Huh. So you always <clears> invite <throat> me back because because uh, that's what I want to talk about. He took all my money out of my wallet. <laughs> I'll be damned. So uh, if you don't know, I'm going to have you, Josh Breitbart, uh, introduce yourself because I don't want to mess up all your titles and all, all that. But we're going to have a couple of questions as we go here. And if you guys have questions, as also let me know. But for right now, Josh is going to give a quick, uh, you know, let you know who he is. Well, thank you, Clayton. I'm, I'm a friend of Clayton Banks's, and that's really the most important thing in my title. Nice. This is over. Uh, Done. And I have been coming to Silicon Harlem events, I think, before Silicon Harlem was named Silicon Harlem. That is true. <laughs> um, it was very sad to miss, uh, miss the conference in October, but I think that may be the only one I've ever missed. That's true. Uh, today, I get to be the Senior Vice President for Connect All at Empire State Development, uh, which means I run the New York State Broadband Office, uh, which is, thank you, um, I'm, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, um, and I used to work with the city of New York, but now getting to do this on behalf of the state is really a great uh, privilege and opportunity. We, have, um, we are responsible for over $1.3 billion in public funding that's coming from the federal government and the state, uh, and that is going to be invested all across the state in new broadband infrastructure, making sure that people who don't have a connection to their home uh, will get a connection to their home, uh, making sure that we have a robust broadband marketplace with small providers, big providers, um, publicly owned infrastructure, privately owned infrastructure that's really thriving across the state. Um, so you have choice of where you get your broadband service from. Uh, and digital equity, uh, we'll be making investments in digital equity, which means any barrier to the use of broadband, we want to be hearing about it and addressing it. Um, we're we'll making investments. Um, we actually are joined tonight by Yay. the Assistant Vice President for Digital Equity for the State of New York, Megan McDermott, um, and our Digital Equity Program Manager, Nazir Jeffries. Uh, so they, they are responsible for a $50 million uh, statewide digital equity program. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa. Did anybody just hear that? $50 million. They're in the right place. You're in the right place. 
Now, you know, the, I will say, though, the thing about, about that is it's one-time money, right? So we have to be strategic because what, what I can tell you, being in these, this room, in these rooms, these conversations for, you know, more than 15 years, uh, is that the need won't end, right? Because technology is changing. It's a different top 10 list this year than it was last year, right? We need to think about how we educate people every year and keep up with the changing technology. But also, we change, right? We get older, our physical abilities change. Um, you know, so uh, we always have to be thinking about that aspect. And people come to uh, our city, our state, uh, our country uh, with different abilities, different uh, language, you know, needing also the support to really have digital equity. Um, so, but I do want to talk about Silicon Harlem because as we've been developing the approach to implementing, you know, this $1.3 billion, uh, we've been all over the state. We've held events in every region of the state. We've um, worked with coalitions in every region of the state. Silicon Harlem hosted an event here. And, you know, one of the things that just, um, and I, I say this every time at Silicon Harlem, is if you don't have an organization like, you know, that's even approaching Silicon Harlem, that is what your community needs. Because it is really rare and valuable to have an organization that, first of all, can convene people. And when I mean, you know, people, I mean, you know, academic leaders, political leaders, the, the youth, the seniors, everybody coming in off, off the street to be talking about and thinking about, you know, what happens next with technology, what happens now with technology. Um, but not just, you know, the high tech, because you're also, you know, making sure that people have an internet connection, being an internet service provider, making sure people have just a basic device, you know, but then also, you know, everybody know, does everybody know there's a gigabit center here? Um, yes, we have a gigabit center here, meaning that we, brought, we were able to get fiber brought right into this, the only place that's done it in this building, and we were able to get fiber brought right in here, and to, we're very grateful to it. It allows for a lot more speed than you would get anywhere else, and we're very proud that we're the only ones that actually have it here in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And do you know, uh, I think you know this story, but uh, the way that uh, that gigabit center concept came about uh, with Link NYC, when you know I was with the city, and we were, you know, they kept saying, "Oh, we're going to build it out. Everybody's going to have access to gigabit Wi-Fi, and it's going to be this great platform that everybody can innovate on." You know, and they kept saying that, and then, then you know, uh, we said, um, I think it was me and, and my while at the time, we said, "You know, you say everybody's going to be innovating on this platform. Do you mean everybody's going to be standing out on the sidewalk in 20 degree weather? You know." hacking on this, you know, you know, coding and developing that. And they said, well, no. I said, well, you know, there needs to be a community space that's on the network where people can go and access the network and develop these new technologies that then can be deployed throughout this, the, the city. And they said, you know, actually, that's a great idea. We should do a gigabit center in every borough. And, um, and what was the top of the list from every, from, for them, for us, uh, then Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, everybody said it's got to be Silicon Harlem. Um, it didn't hurt that when they were getting the franchise, we actually advocated that big time, you know, to your point. And so we actually <clears throat> went to the mayor, we went to everybody to make sure Link NYC was able to not only be deploying on the outdoor, but as a part of that was at least have one location in every borough and at that time, a gigabit sounded like a really important thing. It's a little different now. Now we got to make it 100 but gigabits. Like, but make, this is. But, but you're that, tied in. Exactly. That's so good is because being able to show a community what gigabit speed could do was a, was a gold mine. So I was so proud that, that uh, Link NYC ultimately did do it here. And um, we're going to continue to keep doing that all, all over the world. But, but then, you know, you took it one step further because uh, that was also the same time where there was a conversation about building this advanced wireless research platform in Harlem. And, you know, uh, Columbia was involved, Rutgers, NYU. They got money from the National, you know, wanted to get money from the National Science Foundation to build out this network. And again, you know, it was, it was Clayton uh, and Silicon Harlem who said, okay, but, you know, if, if you're going to build this in Harlem or what are they called, Morningside Heights or whatever they want, you know, or, or, you know, in Harlem, uptown, 
it's got to have a community connection. And so Silicon Harlem has played a role, and it's not just an advisory role, it's actually you know, physically connected in. The fiber that's coming in here for the gigabit Wi-Fi is also connecting, you know, you have a supercomputer here or something, you know. Well, and beyond that was yeah. what we actually um, really looked at the school system in Harlem, and as a result, well, particularly a, a program for 5G and what you could do with 5G, this was years ago, we still do it, but we created this whole curriculum. And so now you had big companies, right, that would, we have a 5G uh, thing going on broadband, right? So we already use in testing with Columbia and all this stuff going on right now. Um, and so big companies want to test on our uh, platform. And it's great. The IBMs, you know, big companies, you know, can we get on this? Can we try this, you know, attachment and all this other stuff? But we took that same to the kids. Kids in high school, we, and we, taught, we, we taught the teachers, here's how you can teach these kids to learn a little bit more how you can use 5G. And so now you got, I hate to say it, but Pookie and them were able to go <laughs> sit right next to IBM on our platform. That's a game changer, people. It, That's what you're doing. Truly, when you put, up, when you put 6G up there, you're not, you're, you, you, Clayton's not exaggerating. The 6G, the, the, the technologies that are going to make up 6G are being tested, developed, researched on the platform that Silicon Harlem is a part of. And because of that work of getting the school system involved, getting the teachers you know, trained on how to use that as an education device, an education platform, for young kids in public schools in, you know, up in the district around here and throughout the city, it means that that innovation over the next 10, 20 years is going to be driven by and have the participation of and leadership of and hopefully also the ownership at the company level, right? Because the digital divide is not just about who uses the technology but who owns the companies uh, that sell the technology. So we've got to address that equity at every level. But, you know, that continuum of who is going to be shape, shaping 6G and what comes next, you know, Silicon Harlem is, is making sure that it's happening here and that young people have a, have a pathway to get connected and that it's addressing, you know, the kind of needs that, that you say, you know, that you, you were talking about before that are persistent here. And so, again, you know, th those needs aren't the same in every community, but that concept of, you know, you have to have it locally rooted, you have to have, you know, all different stakeholders. You have to have industry, ac ac you know, academy, community, young, old, you know, everybody coming together um, to, um, you know, different languages, different cultures, different abilities to figure out what are the ways to use, you know, the, the things we need technology to do in the community. You know, every, every region, every city uh, in the state um, needs that. Silicon Harlem is a model for that. We've got lots of strength that we're building on across the, across the state, truly. Um, and it's been such a great honor for me to be able to go to every one of these regions and see what has been happening, what people have been building, you know, whether it's in, in the North Country, around Adirondacks, around Aquasasne and the, you know, the uh, St. Regis Mohawk uh, Reservation, or go to Buffalo, Syracuse. Um, you know, just amazing to see um, what's happening. And I, you know, really the vision is that this can, you know, this effort, urban, rural, really can unite the state around this vision of, you know, a, you know, what you call a tech-enabled community, mm -hmm. but you know, for all of our communities to be tech-enabled, uh, you know, in 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 the way that you've envisioned and, and implemented here. So, uh, if you guys have questions, start to get it together. I have one question to go with me. So, top three. Top three things that connect all has its, um, I don't know, things that they prefer, you know. Are they, are they looking at, like, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to use the right, wrong, I want to use the right words, not the wrong words, but what I'm trying to get at is there a thing like municipal broadband? Is there, you know, you call connect all, does that mean everyone's going to be connected? Yeah. Just the top three things that you can say you guys yeah, have no, a we, principles three, around. Three, yeah, three, we have three goals. So one is address the digital divide, right, which means um, no disparities in terms of income, race, age, and, and who has access to, to technology. And, but, you know, it's not just that you have the access to it. It's that you can use it to address your educational, economic, uh, health goals, civic engagement, you know, access all the services you need. So digital, address the digital divide is one, of our, one part of our mandate. 
The other is everybody has to have a connection, and there still are about 120,000 locations across the state that do not have a broadband connection, and it is a, a clear mandate of, uh, you know, from the president to the governor, the legislature, to connect all that we address that need, and we're getting help from the federal government to do that. And you'll hear from Jody Vanell, who is uh, New York's uh, program officer for that, who's making sure that uh, this process moves forward to benefit the people of New York. Um, and then the third goal is what the legislature called uh, ensure a robust broadband marketplace. So, you know, that is really where we're talking about, like I said, you know, ev an internet, internet service providers can thrive in, in, in being a business, but that's true if you're a small business, you're a big business, um, and as a consumer, that you have choice, you know, you don't have to take internet as it comes to you, you can decide what you want, you know, how you want to buy it, you know, how, how you want to use it, your, you know, your privacy is, you know, is not like a trade, you don't have to trade your privacy to be able to, to go online. So those are the three goals that the legislature and the governor have laid out for us. And our job is to take these federal and state resources uh, and align them with the needs of the community to achieve those goals. Everybody got that? That's a good story right there. And, you know, Josh has been at this a long time. And uh, the great thing about Josh, he's very straightforward. He's very good, but he's a doggone good friend. He really is. He's a good friend to me. Uh, I see some hands up in the air. Yours is going to be quick. <laughs> Yours is going to be quick. I'm, uh, Joe Quinn, I represent Everizer. And Hi, Joe. I'm just curious to want uh, your opinion about why the first go around and why Wired Score and those organizations weren't successful in documenting where the network is today. Mm -hmm. Right? There's something called open data that was supposed to track. So, you know, you have neighborhoods and buildings that have 20 providers and 40 floors, and we mm -hmm. have neighborhoods that have nothing. Yeah. So, just, you know, they say that sunlight is the best disinfectant. So, how come that information never got out and put into a place where we could access it? Uh, it's a good question. I'll say, you know, specifically about wire. So, Wired Score actually was, uh, you know, something that the New York State Economic Development Corporation helped start uh, with a focus on, uh, you know, people know lead scores for like the environmental quality of a building. The idea was to give a connectivity score for the building. Wired Score, as it you know, developed its business model, focused more on uh, high-end uh, office buildings. And so you know, I think that kind of partly answers the question, right? Is that, is that in a private market, you know, in a totally private market-driven system, the information is there, right? But it's there for class A high-end commercial buildings. And those are the buildings that you know, have, uh, have, uh, have choice you know, and have like really high end connectivity. So, and okay, yeah, and, let's but go, I would say, we're gonna, we're gonna know, go so, to the next question, Josh. So go ahead, finish it. Okay. You want, you want to finish it? Go ahead. Well, just the, the point is, um, you know, it, it's about equity, right? And that even in a place like New York City, where there's lots of internet service providers, if you compare the situation, you know, in Harlem or the Bronx to Midtown and, you know, in those buildings, there is an inequity. And so you have to think about, you know, how, how things compare to the neighbors, not just uh, to a very baseline me measure. Hi, my name's Jose Garcia. I'm with Angel Hack, which is the uh, largest pre-seed accelerator in the world. Um, my question is about 6G in particular, if you could talk more about the health risks, because um, in New England, which has the highest quality of life in terms of uh, the entire country, they vehemently rejected the 5G infrastructure out of concerns of, like, health concerns. And I know some of the community boards in Queens uh, who got a hold of that information also vehemently rejected the 5G. So considering that it's just faster and faster, um, is this a greater health risk uh, for communities? Well, you know, I, um, you know, I understand that it's something that people raise as a, as a concern. I don't know that, um, you know, 6G creates a, or the speeds of it, um, create a, a distinction. But I think you know what's helpful is uh, transparency to make sure that the FCC continues to do its job to, um, you know, uh, document uh, the way these providers deliver the service uh, and um, and any research that may come out. Um, but uh, you know, it, all the research that people have seen is that it's uh, 
you know, a safe technology. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's commonplace um, to, you know, to be out there in the world. Uh, and I think it's, you know, the, the mandate that we really have is to make sure that it's equitably available um, and, um, you know, that people have, you know, the ability to make full use of it. All right, last question. So um, connectivity, I think it was Biden 2019. I'm not really sure. But all that to say, I, was a, I became a trained digital navigator through the library system. But something that always comes up is seniors don't, can't get to the library. Seniors don't even know how to get, navigate to even learn digital literacy. Has any, uh, anything been done to really address our seniors and get accessibility to them? Because even with all the broadband and the, digi you know, the training I have, I'm going to the seniors. They can't get out to um, all of those coalitions who are training folks and getting the information out there. Well, I would say, thank, first of all, thank you. The work you're doing and also your, the second part of your, question, of your question is the answer to the first part. So you're, you're, you are the, the solution. The question, I think, for, for Connect All is, um, is there a way that we can scale up that, uh, the service that you're providing as a digital nav navigator that goes to the seniors, given the, you know, the one-time funding that we have? Yeah, so I'd love, I hope you. Well, I just want to point out, it was, I, I happened to be with a nonprofit who got trained by the library system. Yeah. Uh, in, indeed, I, I will, you know, I, from in my experience, one of the things that when I was with the city that we did uh, during the pandemic uh, was um, distributed over 10,000, uh, distributed 10,000 connected devices to isolated seniors in public housing with no contact, but then every senior who, um, uh, they got a call from, uh, from NYCHA, and if they opted in to get it, UPS delivered to them no contact, and then they got a phone call from Alter Adults Technology Services to make sure that they could get the device set up and then got them into a, a remote training environment. So it can be done. Um, and I think that was, you know, it really never been tried until we had to do it under emergency circumstances to address that extreme isolation, you know, for those seniors uh, that were living alone during the pandemic. And it was a real lifesaver. You know, again, I think, you know, so I think you're, you, in your example, again, it can be done. The question is, how can we do it in a way that is scalable and sustainable, uh, given that you know we don't have an, a, you know unlimited resources? So let's be strategic. But uh, absolutely, seniors, people who are homebound, um, people who you know don't feel don't feel safe going into you know even a library as a government institution because of their documented status. You know, there what we really need to be thinking about is who have those connections already. Who you know what organizations, what people have those relationships, and how do we infuse digital equity into those networks, those relationships, and as you said, you know, take, get those skills so that, you know, we're not asking people to come to a new institution organization, but we're going to a places where they're already comfortable and adding on to that. So helping find those networks uh, is, a, is a, you know, is a key strategy. It's a real thing. I'm so happy you asked that question. And thank you again for the work. We got to really get about it. Hey, let's give them some Harlem love. Joshua Breitbart. Give him some, he got some money, people. <laughs> Clap him like you want some. Come on now. So can you introduce yourself? I don't want to tell your whole biography. So you just, you do your part. Um, well, good evening, everyone. How are you? <laughs> good to see you, too. Yes, happy New Year's. Many blessings to everyone in the room and whoever is streaming or watching. Um, you know, I was thinking about when I was coming here today, before I even introduced myself, I got to, like, praise the guy in the room. And shout out to uh, Assembly Member uh, Taylor for all of the things that he does when I go to <laughs> Albany. He's always there to help me get my extra meetings that are needed. So thank you so much. Um, but I was thinking about, you know, Clayton Banks. Mm. Who is he? You know, the governor has the state of the state. The mayor has the state of the city. The borough presidents have the state of the borough. Uh, 
assembly members, legislators have the state of the district, and then there's Clayton Banks with his Expo 2024. Who do you think you are, sir? Well, <laughs> based on that, I'm last. <laughs> no, sound you're like the a low greatest. level dude. You are the greatest. Look at this room. I want everyone to just give get yourself a round of applause in Clayton for oh, packing this room thank you, on a Thursday <laughs> night in New York City. There's so much competition, and we all chose to be here. So thank you for everything you, that you do for New York City, for technology, for digital equity. Well, thank you. All right. So with that, um, I think Josh already alluded to some of this. So thank you so much. And I want to give many praises to the Connect All office, Josh Breitbart, uh, our new first ever or kind of ish ever digital equity lead for New York State. You also had Nazir Jeffries here, who's leading that initiative too. This is a first time in the state of New York um, that this is happening and really all across the country. So I really want to give all the kudos. I can tell you so much about all of the milestones that uh, we will have, but the administration gave me about 10 points, uh, talking points that I need to get through, but major work that takes place in New York City with so many different partners, New York State. Um, so congratulations in advance to everyone that's helping here. So Jody Vanell, I'm the federal program officer dedicated to uh, the administration um, under the agency, the United States Department of Commerce, um, along with another agency called the National Telecommunications Information Administration. Um, and what we are essentially are are the technological advisors to the executive office, so President Biden, the White House, and everyone. Um, we are on a critical mission called Internet for All. Anyone in the room has heard of Internet for All? All right, well, that's really good for me because now I really get to talk to you all about it, right? Internet for all is literally what Josh said. We are connecting the entire United States and the territories um, to the internet. So as you all know, we all experienced this during the pandemic. Um, the internet is extremely important to our lives. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your economic status is. It is truly the great equalizer to performing at your best. Um, and so uh, you know, both houses, the Senate, Congress, decided that this was really important and set aside uh, legislation, statutory requirements uh, for this to be. And so back in 2020, one or so in the infrastructure bill. Uh, critical infrastructure includes the internet. And so we are on a mission to connecting the entire country. It is the president's top priority to do so. So what happened is that uh, we set up shop called Internet for All, our critical mission. There's one of me representing every great state. I just happen to represent the greatest state in the world, uh, New York. Um, and we're here to do this. And so we were extremely close with Governor Hochul's team, the broadband uh, team, Connect All. Your homework for me today, you should know two websites. You should know the New York Connect All website because that is literally going to be the place that you find all public information about every and anything that they are doing in the state of New York. The other site is Internet for All. That's where you'll learn about all of the, the national platform on what we're doing from the administration. You'll see everything there. You'll see all opportunities to get engaged. Um, so some of the major points that um, we have to talk about today was uh, the milestone. We reached a major milestone on December 27th. I'll just go back to around, I think it's June 27th or 30th. I wasn't invited, but the great Josh Breitbart went to the White House uh, with President Biden, along with all of his peers, um, the broadband office executives, to to make the big announcement about the allocation that would be coming into each and every single state. I'm happy to say that out of the $42 billion, New York will receive uh, $664 million. But in order for them to receive that, we need your help, right? Mm -hmm. So what did Josh and the team do along with the rest of the country? We made it to our next big milestone on December 27th, where 56 out of 56 territories submitted their initial proposals for broadband deployment 
in the United States. That is that's like, New York. that's an accomplishment, that's right? That's New York. No one yeah, was baby. late. What that really means now is that my team, all of us, have to review all of these plans. And I've already heard that New York is so good. And I'm so excited for what's to come with that. So what does that mean for everyone in the room? Some of the buzzwords that we talked about, digital equity. This is where you really get to you know, be part of this. The New York office is going to be submitting their final digital equity report uh, to us, or their plan, rather, on, uh, in, in February. And that will showcase like what is going to happen, what's their plans, after not only connecting you to the internet, but what is the plans Josh already got, went through about so why digital equity is really important. The other part of that is the critical infrastructure, building it out from New York City all the way up towards the Canadian uh, border, um, covering and making sure that everyone is connected. From our national side, we want to make sure everyone is connected in the United States of America. That's why we're investing so many funds to our governors, to our states, to ensure that this is accomplished. And I'm really excited. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It is such an important project and it's so impactful. And I think we're all here and really honored to be part of that. Well, let's just clap right now. I mean, Jesus, that is amazing. Well, I, wanna just, I wanna build on one thing that you, that you talked about or mentioned. What do you want us to do? What do, what, what do, we, what do you want us to do in this audience right now and all of us that we know other people? What do you want us doing? Well, let's, let's do a little pop quiz. What were the two websites that I told you that are critically important? Throw it out. Thank you. The Connect All website and Internet for All. You have to be engaged. You have to know what's going on to be part of this. I don't want to steal Josh's thunder, but there's so much to do. There are businesses that are going to be part of this process, right? They're going to be, if you just look at the internet for all, there are going to be opportunities to get involved in digital equity. Your job is to be informed and also spread the word out because everyone truly, truly, truly benefits from what we're doing. We're connecting the entire United States so that you can thrive. You can be the best citizens in the United States. You can be totally involved. This is a great example of democracy. And so I think it's equally important for you to reciprocate and to, you know, get back in and make sure that Josh and the entire team is equipped by giving your insights, by coming to things like this, supporting organizations like Silicon Harlem, supporting your local organizations in your community, speaking up um, and making sure that you know the um, unserved is served, the underconnected or unconnected is connected at the end of the day. Um, so if you guys have questions, I'm going to stand up and go to you. But I do have one question. Where's the money going to? <sighs> you have to read the plans. <laughs> All right. right? Well, well, No, the money is going to, uh, Josh right. talked about it, it's to build the critical infrastructure. So what does that really mean? It means that someone's digging. Someone is putting this stuff together. Someone is connecting. We talked about how this is a great example of fiber connection. This is exactly what we'll be doing throughout the entire United States. And then there's a digital equity side. After we're connected, then what happens? What can you do with the internet? We're going to make sure that we're working with groups that are educating folks, that are making sure that you have devices that are really supporting you so that you can thrive after you are connected. So, certainly there's a lot of skill in any of this, but there's plenty of people here that have those skills. So take advantage of it. You know, if you never had a shovel before, I can teach you how to do that. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Here we go. I only can do up to three questions. Thank you. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Pedro Hernandez. I work with uh, Empire State Development Corporation uh, here at Harlem CDC. Yep. And my main question um, involving Internet for All is its inclusivity of native lands and reservations. Mm -hmm. how, is, 
how are they involved and how are we in, 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 the, in the endeavor of bringing internet and access uh, of internet and connectivity to everyone, how, how are we taking care of our native brothers? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, Josh talked about some of the requirements. So we have mandates, right? And we have statutory requirements, which includes tribal lands. Um, New York, I believe there's like uh, eight or nine or so federally recognized uh, tribal lands. And so what uh, Josh did, and I traveled with him for several months, we went all across uh, the uh, New York regions, 10 of them. Um, and so we met with various folks. That included uh, certain tribes. Now, I, this is sort of kind of off the record, but it is also a known fact that we have to be extremely respectful of those tribes. And we went to them and we talked, we engaged with them, but we work at their own pace and what they want. And so we were able to work with several tribes successfully and we're continuing to build that relationship. Um, I have to say that from the federal government side, um, NTIA in particular, uh, they have hired a whole group of folks that are actually from tribes all across the uh, United States. So when we in New York need a resource, uh, we need to tap into our tribes. I call my contact and I say, this is what we're going to be doing in New York. Please help us. And they've been really engaged. Um, but yeah, it is a very sensitive matter, but we've talked to some tribes and Josh actually went up to, I believe it was like Mohawk where he went to uh, their, their camp. Um, so that was an accomplishment to be invited. Um, that means that there's been trust that's been developed. So uh, the group has been fully engaging, um, but we engage at their pace. Great question. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Next question. Hi, I'm a neophyte to this, so I don't know how the procurement works, but who's designing? I don't know either. <laughs> who's designing layout? Because I would think if you're going to put bandwidth in a Harlem, you want to put it as future-proof as possible. You know, Web3, the ability to buy, sell, and trade bandwidth, et cetera. I don't think that's available anywhere else, and it make Harlem the little Wakanda. But how do you uh, implement that? Who's doing the designing? You know, what talent is being procured and how? Yeah, so we are not at that stage as yet, but I'll just give you, like, the full setup. So the federal government, as I said, in the... Uh, uh, critical Infrastructure Act uh, set aside all of the funds and also put all of the uh, statutory requirements together called the Notice of Funding Opportunity, AKA NOFO. Um, in that, uh, we reached out to all of the governors all across the United States and said, hey, do you wanna be part of this? Luckily for us, um, every single governor stepped up and said, we want this in our state. When we did that, that was called the letter of intent. We then moved into working with our states. So my counterpart is the state of New York. We provide the funds, but we empower the state of New York to make the decisions based on the feedback that you are providing to them. So as I said, we engage for several months to collect critical data to understand what the true needs are of the state. That was in our initial proposal that Josh and the team thoroughly worked on for almost a year. After that approval of that initial proposal um, is done by my team and the Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Department of Commerce slash the Secretary, Cabinet Secretary Romano, um, we will then uh, extend funds to, the, uh, to New York. Josh and the team will then take that, those plans that we have approved and then start the implementation. So right now I have to say that our next phase, there are many different phases in the process over the next five to uh, seven years, but the next phase that Josh is about to open up is what's called the challenge process. That's where people can challenge to see if broadband is really available in an area. Then after that, uh, he's really waiting to see it, when we will approve his initial proposal. Then he has one year to finalize that proposal, and then the funds then keep on trickling in during that time. Then we get to our sub-grantee selection, and I think that's where all of you all in the room uh, will be pretty interested in, because that's where you get to engage. So realistically, what are we looking at? internet service providers, those who may contract with them um, to be able to 
do the actual uh, critical infrastructure. So Empire State Development Corporation is leading that initiative. That's why I say please stay in contact with them via that website. It is extremely transparent. Everything that's going on is listed there, including many different forums for all different types of stakeholders. But that is coming next once we finish getting to the initial proposal. Right. To be continued. <laughs> uh, so thank you, thank, thank you so much for sharing. My name is Jose Garcia. I'm with Angel Hack. Um, and the context for this question is that typically with government contracts, it tends to go to businesses that are in the, you know, that have the tight relationships. And sometimes the better ideas come from startups that are not as well known or not known at all. Um, for example, I'm in contact with a company that's building infrastructure in Africa, in Ghana specifically, and they have an office in New York, but they have no idea how to compete for this, and they're a black enterprise. Mm -hmm. So how can we help these startups that don't have brand recognition because they're very really busy building their product out or their, their market strategy, to have a viable chance in competing for these contracts because they're not building blockchain. They're building something entirely different because they know that blockchain isn't uh, infallible. Mm -hmm. um, so from the administration's perspective, and I know this really well in New York, procurement is key um, and engagement and making sure that uh, there's fair opportunity to everyone is very important. Um, but for us, we want to make sure that MWBEs are part of the process, like everyone gets to be part of the process, right? So as I said, everyone in here is a true stakeholder. Your job is to share the information. So that company, you should be sharing it and you should be sending them where to what website? Exactly, because Josh will be, at the end of the day, Empire State Development will make the decision on wh who they will be contracting with. But there's the national guidelines of making sure that everyone is engaged. So that's why we're going around to different folks. We're going around to different stakeholders and making sure that they're aware of this. MWBEs are part of that process. Small businesses are part of that process. Women-owned businesses, everyone is part of this process. Clayton, thanks for putting this together. Uh, Curtis Archer, Harlem Community Development Hello. Corporation, a subsidiary of Empire State Development. So uh, you heard uh, time and time again, MWBE, Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprise. So please, if you're seeking your certification, remember yes. you don't pay a dime. We are your tax dollars at work. So seek us out right there at 125th Street at the Harlem State Office Building. Please, this is one of my board members right here, the assembly members, so please, he'll, he'll let me know if I'm not doing a good job, so please. He, uh, he'll let me know too. He'll absolutely. definitely send me a so, message. 212-961-4100. Repeat, 212-961-4100. Ask for either Brian Cook or Elaine Caesar. Thank you. And if you ever get his number, he always answers your call. Oh. All right, so. I, I definitely want to give Josh. I think Josh, that was a really come important. And, um, I don't know. Jody, what do you want to <laughs> What are you it's doing? It's about the measurements in place. <laughs> it's about the measurements in place to ensure that we are meeting guidelines, we are following protocols, we are producing at the end of the day. Uh, well, yeah, it's like Jody said, we, we publish all these, the, a lot of these are set in place by the, the federal programs, uh, but then you know, we bring that to the uh, Empire State Development Board of Directors for approval. But we're, we're you know, been out talking to people about what are the highest priorities. We're setting the, the scoring and the, and the criteria based on what, what we hear from you all. And like Joe just said, we've got, a, we've got a report, you know, back to our board of directors, back to the National Telecommunications Information Administration, report to the gov you know, goes up to the governor, goes up to the White House, but also, you know, I just told you, I'm gonna be right back here. So if we don't get it right, you're gonna let me know and we're gonna, you know, keep working on it. So that's, you know, that the yeah. accountability is not, is like, yes, we've got criteria in place, um, you know, and, and we've got a lot of money to work with, um, and we're gonna be responsible stewards of that money. But, you know, the community engagement is the key accountability measure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why part of, part of what makes it sustainable is also the coalition building. And, you know, having a strong civic engagement coalition you know, a, a base of political power that you can hold people who, 
you know, I've been given this privilege to be in this role uh, accountable for, for the needs of the community. So I think it really, you know, it's, we have these, these formal measures in place, lots of accountability that we follow and report through, but, you know, ultimately, you know, we ha as, as Jody has said, we have to be answerable to the, to the people of the state of New York. And, you know, and that means being, being in these rooms and having these conversations and answering the question at the beginning of the process and coming back at the end and answering it again. So, you know, it, we meet up in January, conference in October. Uh, you know, we can continue to, to be out here and, and answer the questions. And I'll just add the last point to that. Um, this is such a high profile um, mission that there's actually a live dashboard that's been created so you know exactly where each state is, which sometimes rattles states, but not New York because New York is always knocking it out the park. So I definitely want to give you kudos and your entire team and everyone for doing this. So well, it, it, It's very much a uh, federal, state, local community collaboration to get this done. So, you know, we've been working in partnership all across the state. Uh, and, you know, again, it's just great to have partners like Silicon Harlem also to, to be collaborating with, you know, Greater Harlem, Harlem Community Development Corporation, you know, all these, all these structures. When it comes to connectivity, everybody has a stake in it. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's the, that's the power of what we're capable of doing um, in these years ahead. If I could say. <clears throat> what Jody has said a little bit earlier, that everyone needs the internet. And if you really want a good <laughs> way of thinking of it, I go a little bit further. If you don't have the internet, basically, you're no longer a citizen. Hello. I have a car. Therefore, I get a ticket. <laughs> I always pay my tickets online. Mm -hmm. And one day I said, what if I didn't have online? So I called. And the first thing it said, the best way to get this ticket done is to go online. <laughs> if you don't have it, you're no longer a citizen. If they're going to move your civics to the internet, you got to have it. So I go a little bit further on this. It's, it's that strong, to your point. Give these people like a great Harlem clap. I mean, whoa, amazing. Man, oh man. It ain't me, man. This is a we. This is a we. And I want to stay connected together so we can make sure that we continue to push them to do the right things, which we're, they're already doing great work. So we want to be behind that. We want to help. We want to be, you know, partners. We want to really make sure this works for everywhere, but certainly right in our communities right now. Thank both of you. Thank God for you. I really appreciate it. No, you all are rock stars. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Thank you so much.